Hello guys, welcome back to our channel. And today, we're gonna be reading Diary of Wimpy Kid and Diaper Overload. It came out about uh, it came out about October twenty fourth, if I remember correctly. So I'm a bit late, but I couldn't you know like really find it anywhere. And so before we get into it, it like I, I mean I just really want to jump into it right now. Before we get into it, please like uh, please like and subscribe to this uh, to this video. All all of this con uh, all of this content like it's new like the diaper overload series. I have not read this book before, so all of it is new for me. Anyway, see ya. Anyways, guys, so this is our room get diaper overload. In case you in case you don't know what loaded diaper is, it's it's Roderick's band. And I and I know like the name is kinda and the, it like I mean as it said in the first book you may think like they made it look like that and so it could be cool. Okay, you'll see what I mean later. Oh, like you see like the weird spelling and like o overload. No, not an overload. Sorry, like a diaper. So yeah, you may think that it uh, that like maybe it's loaded uh, loaded dipper or something like that. But but it's actually not. You may think that Roderick made it look like that so it could be cooler. But I, I mean, apparently, according to Greg, Roderick doesn't know what loaded diaper is spelled like. And yes, I know loaded diaper isn't a great name for a band. But anyway, what can we do? Anyway, December, Monday. I always thought I wanted to be rich and famous, but now I'm starting to wonder if fame and fortune are, are worth all the hassle. I'm sure it'd be great to be a celebrity because it'd be nice to get to get the rock star treatment and see your name in lights. Greg, the musical. But there's only so much attention one person can take, and I bet that kind of thing would get uh, kind of old after a while. If you're famous, you can just uh, turn it off whenever it's inconvenient, and it wouldn't be much fun getting mobbed for autographs and selfies all the time. True. When you're a celebrity, you can't even take care of your personal business without everybody finding out and posting it on social media. Toenail fungus clinic. Uh, the, and when you're out in public, so, someone's bound to snap a picture of you when you're not looking your best. At Trizzy72 Harris, spot did the toenail fungus clinic this afternoon. First of all, why is Trizzy at the toenail fungus clinic? And then, and, I mean, yeah, I mean, of, of course you may have toenail fungus, but, but I mean, she's like, oh, he, he had the toenail f fungus clinic. I mean, what, uh, you, you have a toenail fungus too. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's the reason you're there. Anyway, so this is what she posted. Is that a booger? It comments, Mic uh, at Mixmax98823, disgusting, at, at Bethany Aziz. The clinic or the booger? Actually, it's 72 hair, slow. And on, on top of that, everyone feels like they uh, they have the right to know all the details about your personal relationships, which can be a lot of fun either. Snooper magazine. Split. Uh, bonus. Plastic surgery disasters. Trisha dumps Greg. Was it the booger? <laughs> Speaking of relationships, when you're a celebrity, you never know who you can trust. Because even the people close to you will be happy to air your dirty laundry if the price is right. Gossip Weekly. Greg's mom tells all. He ate his home own earwax. Plus, Manny tells his side. The celebrities have it worse than the former child stars. Because after they grow up and fall out of the spotlight, they have to learn how to live like regular people. And, I, and, and I'm sure it's no, no fun being a, someone who used to be famous. Celebs, where are they now? Greg Heffley. Then, now, sanitation worker. People recognize former child stars even after they've become adults. I'd like to be able to enjoy a meal with my family in public without getting hassled by my fans later on. Say it, Zooey Mama! Say it! Wasn't that Rowley? Rowley? And that wasn't even me! Don't get me wrong. It'd be nice to have mansions and, exp and expensive cars and all the other stuff that comes with being famous. But, and I just wouldn't want to deal with the downside of fame. Hey, nothing comes without a downside. That's what, uh, that's what would be awesome to have friends with someone who's famous. Then you get all the perks of being a celebrity without any of the negatives. Famous people are always traveling around the world and going on fancy vacations. And I could definitely see myself getting used to that kind of lifestyle. Especially if I wasn't the one playing. Okay, first of all, no matter how rich your friend is, I'm not sure he'd be willing to take you on like a really expensive trip. Ah... Uh... Plus, if you're a friend with someone who has more money than you, you can always count on them to pick up the tab. Does this steak look medium rare to you? 
Okay, that's just rude. I mean, and, I mean, yeah, I, I and, and I agree. Like, if you want a medium rare steak, and and like, uh, I agree if you want a medium rare steak, and like, she just gave it raw to you. Uh, yeah. And uh, if you and your famous friend ever have a falling out, it wouldn't it wouldn't be the end of the world because people will pay good money for juicy celebrity gossip. Gossip Weekly. Greg Heffley spills. He's a bad tipper. <laughs> Cheapskate. Raleigh Jefferson. The only problem with my plan is that I don't have any friends who are on track to become famous. And even though I've tried to encourage my friend Rowley to start making a name for himself, he just doesn't seem all that interested. The amazing Rowley! Human cannonball. So I decided it would be even better than being friends with a celebrity is being related to one. Because you know your, your Christmas present would be way nicer if you got a rich person in the family. My older brother Roderick actually has plans on, uh, to become a famous musician. But I just don't know how realistic it is to be successful when your band's name is Loaded Diaper. It's, see, this is what I was talking to you about. Like, at the start of the video, you may be like, Oh, Rob, why are you talking about a Loaded Diaper? But, I mean, it's Roderick's band's name. And, like, the Loaded Diaper, like, the name, you may think he made it to look cool, but according to Greg, uh, uh, Roderick doesn't know how to spell Loaded Diaper. But seriously, what kind of a name is Loaded Diaper? Aside from their name, Loaded Diaper has a few obstacles standing in their way. The first one is that they still practice on our basement, even though my parents probably wish they didn't. We're leaking through your speakers like a chocolate cap, bro. What is that? Uh, like the people, uh, like the people on, and then in the on the dinner table are like, why did we agree to come here? Plus, what's a chocolate cow? On top of that, Loaded Diaper hasn't played an actual show in more than a year. And the only member of the band who's not in high school is the lead singer, Bill. But he's 35 years old lived in, and lives in his grandma's basement. Even with all that, Roderick still thinks Loaded Diaper can make it to the big time. And he's come up with a plan for how they can do it. There's a competition called the Battle of Bands that's held every year. And Roderick thinks if Loaded Diaper works hard to get ready, they can actually win it. Battle of the Bands. Honestly, I like the logo. Roderick's favorite band, Metal Chihuahua, won the battle of the bands when they were just starting out. Ba- Metal Chihuahua. Honestly, the, the, the name's cool and in a way kind of bad. But yeah, I mean, Metal Chihuahua. What, why Chihuahua, though? I'm not a big fan of that kind of music, and the only reason I've ever heard of Metal Chihuahua is because Roderick's bedroom is plastered with their, their posters. Dog eat dog. Metal Chihuahua. Honestly, I mean, I don't really like rock music. I prefer pop, but... You know, to each their own. Roderick says the Battle of the Bands competition launched Metal of Chihuahua's career. And, and afterward, they were on the cover of every magazine. Ear Splitter, Monthly, Top Dog, Metal of Chihuahua leads the pack. Symbol Enthusiast, How Metal of Chihuahua's Sebastian Sleeve took a bite out of rock and roll. Okay, that must hurt. Concerned Parent, Bat to the Bone, How Heavy Metal Music is Corrupting Our Youth. Yeah, that is true, honestly. I mean, I don't know about the corrupting or youth sort of thing. But, like, but I mean, the heavy metal is just, like, in my opinion, it's just bad music. I mean, sorry to the people in the audience who, you know, like uh, uh, heavy metal, rock, and all that. I mean, I'm not saying it's bad music, but to me, I don't really, like, it's not my kind of music. Like honestly, I, I mean, a few of you. I mean, I don't really even like K-pop. Like everybody's like, oh my god, Blackpink. But I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a good, it's a good band. But I mean, it's just not for me, you know. Metal Chihuahua broke up before Roger got a chance to see them play. So everything he he knows about them is, is from magazine articles and old concert footage. But when Bill was ten years old, his grandma took him to see Metal Chihuahua on their last tour. He was always bragging about it to Roger. In fact, sometimes Bill st- uh, still wears a t-shirt he got from that concert, even though he probably shouldn't. I have no idea. Br- oh. <laughs> Honey buns. I have no idea if it's realistic for Loaded Diaper to win this competition or not. Uh, but if Roderick's band actually goes on to fame and fortune, I'm going to be wanting to tell their story. Because if I have to suffer through Loaded Diaper's band practices, I figure I might as well get something out of it. Diaper Overload, the inside scoop on the world's most revolting band by Greg Heffley. Wednesday. 
Roger told his bandmates that one of the reasons Metal of Tijuana got people to take them seriously early on because whenever they were out in public, they looked like they were already famous. He said the first step in making people think you're a rock star is to dress like one. Burger Gobbler. <laughs> so the other nights, the guys went to the mall to buy some cool outfits, but they found that the, the trendy clothes are really expensive and their ripped jeans cost twice as much as brand new ones, so they left without buying anything. They came back to our house and ripped their own jeans, but when mom found them piled in Roger's room, she put patches on the holes, and I'm pretty sure she ironed them too. After that, the guys went to the Goodwill store, where you can get used clothes pretty cheap, and Bo put together an outfit that he thought made him look like the lead singer of a rock band. Honestly, it looks kind of good, I guess. Yeah, it looks good. But it turned out half the clothes built bought had been donated to a store by his grandma, and she made him turn right around and return them. Then Mackie had an idea. He said they could just buy rock star costumes because that uh, because the Halloween outlet nurse was having an uh, after season clearance sale. And everybody agreed that seemed like a smart plan. A, ro- a rock superstar costume with electric guitar. But the costumes didn't look like anything they did on the packaging. They were more like plastic aprons and cool outfits. And the, gu- and the guitars were miniature inf- inflatables. If the guys ever go out in public wearing those plastic aprons, I really hope Bill wears some pants underneath. Because those costumes only cover the front. Uh, Roger says that every serious band gets professional photos taken so they can use them on posters and album covers. But it turns out professional photographers are expensive. So Roger's been looking to other options. The option he, uh, he settled on was asking Mom to take the pictures. Because she offered to do it for free. And so they spent the afternoon doing a photo shoot in the backyard. But it was hard to get a shot where the background was a fence or a swing set in the background. After a while, they ditched to their costumes and just tried using the stuff around them. But they ended up with a bunch of pictures they're probably not going to use. Mom said the guys looked uh, too serious in all the pictures and music was supposed to be fun. So he got them to light it up a little. But I don't uh, think the guys would like the way these, the photos came out either. Eventually, it got too cold and the guys moved inside. Mom had other things to do, so I got put on photographer duty. Roger wanted to get a few photos that would really tell people what loaded diaper is all about, which is how we ended up in the bathroom. But Drew and Mackie started screwing around, and Drew ended up with a toilet plunger stuck to his back. The guys were about to go to the emergency room, but then Roger remembered that one of our neighbors is a plumber. After that, the guys looked through all the photos, but they didn't think they looked professional enough. Mike remembered uh, that there was a photo studio at the mall that could probably do this kind of thing pretty cheap. Everybody liked that idea, so they piled into Roderick's van and headed to the mall. But Mackie forgot was the photography place at the mall was a baby studio. And I guess the studios didn't choose you about whose picture they take, though. And they had the guys in front of the camera in no time. It took a little while for them to warm up to a photographer, but apparently this lady was really good at m- making her subjects feel comfortable. I see that smile, Gucci Gucci Goo. Hee <laughs> hee, rattle rattle, suck suck. The session lasted an hour, and the photographer took a ton of pictures. But I don't see uh, any of these photos making their way into loaded diapers posters either. <laughs> I guess the guys still wanted their pictures, though. It was cheaper to order a calendar than to buy individual photos. So that's the package they went with. Mom's already using it as a family calendar, so I guess that means we have about 12 months of loaded diaper to look forward to. October, Manny Dentist, Greg Tetanus Shaw, Parents Teacher Conference, Aunt Lydia's b- uh, Birthday, Halloween. Roger thinks the only way for Loaded Diaper to win the Battle of the Bands competition is to play a bunch of shows and keep improving. But right now, they don't have a good way of getting around. A few weeks back, Roger's van got rear ended by someone, and now he can't open the back door. What is it? That means it's practically impossible to load all the band's equipment into the van. Art looked into getting the doors replaced, but he found out it would cost more to get the new ones in the van is actually worse. So, with Roderick's van being out of business, how are they ever going to prepare for the band? Anyways, guys, so this will be the end of the video. Please remember to like and subscribe to the channel and share it with all your friends and family. Bye.